Good Lord, well, another day and another uh, HDD and a DVD player can burn a thing. And this one has the free view built in, as you might expect, in an English one. Now, the reason I've taken it apart, um, it wasn't actually defective in itself. But it's just to show you a couple of capacitors that can go. Now, removing this board here very carefully and folding it back reveals one here, which is about 470 microfarad, and then there's another one down there. And it was these that were bulging on the black one I originally found, the DMR 770, I think it was called. Now on this one, everything works, although I think I'll be uh, dusting that fan before she goes back together again, among other bits. Hard drive is okay, it's a Seagate one, rather than the Samsung, or was it a Hitachi device, and the other one. All seems to be in working order, but uh, alas, somebody has spilt uh, coffee with sugar in it, or some such, in the remote. The two tiny screws in the back, in the battery compartment, but the thing pops together, and it is a little bit of a cow to get into. I've tried not to damage it too much while doing that, and then clean the pads out. The buttons are nice on here because they're moulded as one thing, so you can't uh, lose them as such. The only one that is a loose fitting is this, and this can only go in one way. And of course we know the OK button is at the middle, don't we? So they've made it very easy indeed to work on. The caps I'm looking at here are not the same ones that were in use on the other machine. Don't know if that will help any, but uh, one is right next to this vertical board. I'm not sufficiently up on hard drives, computers, etc. to know what this does. It, it looks something like a they call it a RAM board, don't they, on a computer. And then you've got this one here. Uh, yes, they are a bit of a swine to get at, and yes, you do have to take out the main circuit board to get at it. Other places to watch on these are the power supply system, which is here. and has a little cooling fan, as you can see. And sometimes you end up with a bulging cap here, but these all look to be in very good order to me. It may be that Panasonic changed the design, or uh, perhaps it's been seen to before, who can say. But I thought I'd make this just to show you that uh, if one of these does go fat, it's not necessarily the end of the world. And they are a very useful machine. The black one I've got going, and the Freeview Tuner works. We've got more channels than we had before, more old rubbish to watch, and more newer rubbish to watch. DVD machine part of it appears to work as it should. I found some uh, DVD RW things the other day, weird things that... Uh, can be burnt into your own DVD if you will and then the hard drive seems all right so so far full steam ahead and uh, I've had it playing this afternoon through this little old screen I found on the dust uh, bless this house <laughs> that's uh, more the sort of equipment I do work on usually that they show on there it's a uh, film from the, uh, well I suppose it would be the very early years of the 70s or late 60s perhaps. Put it this way, it's old enough to have in the background of a cafe, if you look very carefully, a Philips N4308 reel-to-reel -reel chugging away, providing background music. <laughs> anyway, hope you liked it, and uh, for me and my uh, little helper, who has uh, come round as he often does, goodbye for now.